Mother is dating a weirdo. To start, I'm F20. I have a six-year-old autistic sister. For the past five years, I've been in the house depressed. Deeply, I stopped going to school after my freshman year. My sister was only 10 months old at the time. My mom is 40. And at this time, five years ago, 2018, almost six years ago, she started dating a younger guy in his early 20s. She was around 34, turning 35. The guy is a creep, has sick fetishes, wears diapers, is basically gay has rape fetishes, and even has sad my mom. He left my mom for an 18-year-old two years ago. Her birthday was literally three days before mine, and we were the same age. She was a heroin addict, another one of his fetishes, to watch them do drugs, pass out and sass them. He ended up coming back to my mom last year to use her for our house. Now this is where me and my sister come on. I'll admit I haven't done anything since I was 15. To add context to this, me and my family have been homeless since I was 11 and finally got a place at 14. We moved far away from family. We were in an abusive house with my aunt. When we moved, she got pregnant by her autistic sister's dad, who passed away. It was all toxic and abusive. In a domestic violence shelter from 2015 to 2017, when we finally got a house again, I thought we were safe and would finally have to stop switching schools. Also, I have a 16-year-old brother. By the time she had the baby and we moved into our house, she started seeing this guy who controls literally everything. Carrot the rapist. We only had that house for three months. Three months of freedom since 2015. It breaks my heart. She became so screwed up mentally because of him. I haven't worked. And I have extreme anxiety. I've gained weight in the house. Now, in 2024, I want to finally get a job focused on me and go back to school. She is literally obsessed with him and doesn't do anything but sit down all day. He runs the house. He yells and talks sh asterisk t about everyone. And it isn't even a home anymore. All they do is sit around and do nothing. My mother doesn't do any kind of drug. By the way, she's just gone crazy because of him. When me and my brothers did come to visit us, he basically told my dad he wanted to watch him have sex with my mom. Fucking sick. He raped my mom that same day, saying we could go back to our home city, hours away, if she had sex with him. She did it, and my dad didn't even end up taking us back home, not like we had anywhere to live anyway. Now my goals have been stopped because she keeps purposefully going to sleep at any time. She feels like it, even when I'm sleeping, leaving my autistic baby sister alone with this creep who literally has rape fetishes and wears diapers. My six-year-old sister wears diapers as well. She can talk, and she watches YouTube every day. My dad, no matter what I say to my mom, she doesn't care. She lets her on YouTube, and my sister ends up watching very disgusting sexual things all day and reaping them. Saying she likes penis saying nigga means saying all these disgusting things. She acts very sexually, and I can't tell if it's because of YouTube or if she's being she shows her ass. She slaps it, and she tries to kiss me on the lips. I have seen her watching cartoons kiss. But the point is, I'm so worried for her that I don't know how I can work if she's constantly leaving my sister alone with this creep. The girl he left my mom for also told my mom that he raped her, and other girls have said the same thing. Mind you, the girl is 20 and my mom is 40. A young girl comes to my mom about being raped by her boyfriends, and she stays with him. I was just sleeping, trying to get my schedule back, and I heard my sister in the hallway. She tries to come into my room every day. It's 1 a.m., and she has a crazy schedule. I tried to text my mom on Messenger, but somehow, I just knew she was sleeping. I go downstairs, and surely, she is sleeping. She left my sister alone with that rapist, and I had to wake up out of my sleep to take care of her. This has been happening almost every day. How can I work? How can I move out? My mom was a good mom to me and my brother, and she never let anyone watch us. It's like she completely gave up on my sister. She doesn't care what happens to her. She's so bothered by my sister. She's also been talking to a new guy online. So, she literally puts him over everything and everyone. All she does is sit there all day texting this guy. This is why I don't like when she dates. She's the type to put the boyfriend over the kids. Now I've talked to her about cameras and keep telling her, please, if you're going to leave her alone with him, can you buy cameras? I don't see why she can't. She fights, argues, and gets defensive when I ask her to. I'm trying to turn my life around for the first time. And it's like she doesn't like that. She wants me to be a free babysitter who needs and lives off of her. Her boyfriend calls me fat every day. And every time he sees me, he calls me names. I'm so tired of it. I want to go to the gym, get a job, and move out. But I can't even trust my mom with my sister. She has health issues as well. My mom, she doesn't want to get any of that checked out. Her whole life revolves around these men. My brother isn't in school anymore. And neither is my sister. This house has no structure. For them to cook dinner, they want me to slave around and clean my sister's messes. As well as watch her while my mom sits in the chair. I can cook. I'm Puerto Rican. I can cook a damn big meal. They never let us use the food as a control. My brother doesn't have to do anything now. I know I'm an adult living here rent-free. But damn, I'm with my sister all day if I'm not sleeping. Any advice? Editing by the way. My sister doesn't eat the foods we eat. She eats her own because she's autistic and refuses to eat anything else. My 16-year-old brother rarely eats because they use food as a pawn for us. He usually starves all day. We are Spanish, so my brother likes home-cooked meals, usually rice, beans, and chicken. They just buy frozen foods, chips, and cakes and don't cook anything. Might I add the creep sits in the kitchen literally all day, even after my mom goes to sleep. He sits in there playing his games. He takes over the whole house. You are probably wondering if he has ever tried anything with me. Well, no. To add more context, he's a white guy. I'm half black. 
my skin color is brown. He's racist now, but not that racist because he has made me very uncomfortable and has done weird things. He sneaks into my room when I'm downstairs or not home. My mom is the white skin kind of Spanish. My baby sister is half white, so she is white. I know this has nothing to do with the story, but I'm going to dive deeper because I need to vent. He's racist. My younger brother is full time, but he has brown skin as well. So here is my white passing mom dating a white man with two basically black kids. And the guy is racist. You know what we have to hear. When I say the guy is gay, I mean he really is. He hacked my mom and texted men she talks to, pretending to be her, saying, please come fuck me. He texted gay men begging to suck their cock. And here is my 16 year old brother. He pervaded on him. He's nicer to him than any of us. He treats my mom and sister like shit and obsesses over my brother. Now I'm not that worried for him because he can talk. I don't understand why my mom stays with someone who focuses on her children. Autism kids are hard to deal with. Yes, it's a fact. The guy cleans a lot. My sister makes big messes every day that nobody tries to stop. That's why she claims she stays with him. Even when we left her, I was down there every day doing my best to help. And it was never enough. I'm wasting my life helping someone who will never give me credit. I haven't started my own life yet. And I turn 21 next month. She can't do anything without mine or his help. My aunt has two autistic bad kids and does everything alone. No help. Nothing. My mom is so lucky to have me and doesn't see it. I'm tired of this. All of it. Now he sleeps on the couch because my mom doesn't want him in her bed because of the whole diaper thing he wears so I can legit can never even sit on the couch or chill in my own house. He masturbates down there, and I don't want to tell my mom. I have to pee a lot at night, and the bathroom is downstairs. One day, I tried to go pee, and he was masturbating. This is disgusting and scared me, so I went back up. Since that day, I have started peeing in bottles. Yes, I find it disgusting, but dude, go down there and possibly be saw or see that. So he has fetishes, that's one of them. Apparently, one day, I had around three of them under my bed and was waiting to dump them out. I hate saying this, it's embarrassing, but I did. He goes in there, finds them, and tells my mom, and she starts saying I'm nasty and have mental problems. Little does she know what the cause of his behavior is. Since that I, I noticed he started acting sexually towards me and waiting around for me. I guess that turned him on. It makes me sick. He does stare at me daily, and my mom even argues with him about all three of us, saying in his face how he wants her kids. She even accuses me of wanting him. She says very hurtful things like, you wanna fuck my fat black daughter? Might sound funny, but it really is not. Now the whole her going to sleep again thing just happened. And I go down there, and she's literally talking to him about kids who usually get SA, telling him I think he touched my sister, talking shit like she always does, saying kids who get the abuser usually go for the quiet ones, blah blah I'm like, dude, she's autistic, she can't even tell you if it happened, she can talk, but not that much, it amazes me how much she really doesn't care about my sister. She never even takes her out. My sister's day consists of YouTube and toys. I really want to get my life together and take her away from my mom. She isn't fit to take care of her anymore. I want to take my sister out, spend time with her, make her laugh, and get her off the phone. My mom is too obsessed with her own looks or men to care. Whenever we even argue, that's all she says. I'm so sexy. I'm fine. I can take any man you like. You're hating on me because I'm so fine. These are literally the things she says and does. She will always be this way. Even when she's mad at my sister. She calls her an animal and a fat white bitch. When I was little, she called me a black bee asterisk tch. It's starting over, and I don't want my sister to deal with this or being SA. I love her so much. Also, we are four to five hours away from our hometown, where all of our family is, and have no one down here. None of us have a car or know how to drive. She says she wants to move, but when it comes down to it, she never does. We got so far from the family from all the shelters we were in. When we first lost our house in 2015, we lived with my aunt, who was very abusive until 2016. From 2016 until 2017, we were in and out of shelters and living with my abusive sister's dad, who passed away. In November 2017, we got our house. We were homeless. Sir, January 2015, February 2018, three months after getting a house, is when she got with this rapist guy. We literally haven't gotten a break in almost nine years. It's hard, being controlled, abused, and having to deal with other people. I miss when it was just us and she was a normal mom. Also to add, I have never dated anyone and am a virgin. She gloats about this and tells her boyfriend all the time. And everyone really, which I feel is going to get me even more. I was always the shy type and needed her. I was always with her and sheltered, which is why I was scared to go out into the world alone. But not anymore. She sees this and gets mad. She wants me to need her. Story 2. A lawyer's pro revenge on a wife beater. Let's call him Joe. I have to call him something, the man I ruined, but I can't call him by his real name. So let's call him Joe. Joe was a wife beater. I was hired by Joe's brother-in-law, the brother of the wife that Joe beat. My client was also Joe's ex-business partner. Aside from the whole you beat up my sister thing, my client had another beef with Joe. A serious business beef. My client took it to court and gave me the case to handle. Joe and his lawyers fought me long and hard. Joe was confident that his bullshit and outright perjury would carry the day. It had always worked before. His bullshit and his fists had won him a good settlement with his ex-wife. Free of child support. So maybe he thought that threats and lies would carry the day once more. But he was wrong. And after the trial I had a judgment against him. A big judgment. Far bigger than he could pay. 
Joe twisted and turned, and he shimmied and shaken, but after a while, I'd located and taken all his assets. It was easy, really. Joe had no thought of consequences, and so he didn't lawyer up until it was too late. If one of my clients ever sues you, you're in trouble because my clients lawyered up before they even knew your name. But Joe didn't lawyer up until the process server threw the papers at his feet. And by then, it was far too late. I went through Joe's assets like a meat grinder, and after a while Joe had but one property left, a house, and he clung to that house, for it was rented out and his sole source of income. Joe lived in the unfinished basement, and he survived on what the upstairs tenants paid him. He cashed their rent checks at payday loan places, paying hefty fees, but it was worth it because he knew that I'd garnish any bank account that he opened. Joe managed to hide his rental place from me for a while because he owned it through a numbered company, but my investigator found him one day and followed him home. Joe self-wrapped his way through the next stage, which took a couple of years, while I punctured his corporate veils and his sad efforts at a fraudulent conveyance. But in the end, I had his last house, the house where he lived in the unfinished basement. Joe stepped out one day to get a pack of cigarettes, and when he came back, the sheriff had changed the locks. Can my client at least live in the basement? Joe's lawyer said to me, pro bono, because by this point Joe had nothing to pay lawyers. I knew the pro bono guy, he practiced law nearby. As I was talking to him, I could see the pro bono guy's office window across the parking lot from my office tower window. Asked the purchaser. I said, it's out of my hands. And it was. I told Joe's lawyer that the new owner, a nominee, one of my client's employees, wouldn't let him back into his shitty basement apartment. Joe, a man who had owned this and that here and there and all over town, had just lost the last thing he owned on earth, except for his truck. He still had his truck left. Joe's truck was this big, gas-guzzling beast that he drove around in. It was too old and too frail to be worth seizing, so I let Joe keep it, and I was glad I did that, because now the truck was where Joe slept, until he made a mistake and lost his truck. 2. He lost his truck the day I got a phone call from the tenants at the house that Joe used to own. He came back and parked his truck across the driveway, the tenant said, adding that Joe had gone nuts. He parked his truck there in a rage, out of spite, and then walked into town, saying he'd be back later that day to sleep in his truck. Can you get around the truck? I asked. The tenant could not. The driveway was blocked. I called one of the tow truck guys that I used to defend back in my criminal lawyer days, and in a couple of hours that truck was gone and parked somewhere else, somewhere special, in accordance with my specific instructions. My guy wants his truck back, the pro bono lawyer said the next day when he called me. Not happening. I said. I stood in my office 15 floors above the parking lot and looked down where I imagined my pro bono counterpart was standing in his office, facing the same lot. But you have no right to the truck, he said. He has no right to block a man's driveway. I replied, it was terrible, really, standing up high and pronouncing words that took away a man's final asset, the last thing he owned on earth. I imagine that this must be what God feels like before he strips a man of everything and sends him to hell. Are you really going to make me go to court over this? Said the pro bono guy. Do what you gotta do, I said. And the pro bono guy said his client was coming in the next day to sign an affidavit, and then they were going to court to get the truck back. But I was unconcerned. The next day was bright, the sun was shining, and it was 9 a.m. As I looked out the window and sipped my coffee, my phone rang. I picked it up. It was a pro bono man. Why didn't you tell me that Joe's truck was parked right outside my office? His voice was tight, and I could tell that he must have been shaking with anger. Is that so? I said, staring out at Joe's truck parked 15 stories below me. How careless of my bailiff to leave the truck where your client could easily take it back. I really must speak to him. Very funny. My client's going to sue. No, he isn't. He's going to get in that truck and drive away right now. I told my tow guy to fill up the tank, and he gave it an oil change too. Gratis. Tell your client to get in his truck and drive off, and that if I ever see that truck again, I'll seize it to satisfy the rest of my client's judgment. The pro bono guy tried to argue, but I was firm. Then I put the phone down and picked up my coffee. A few minutes later, Joe walked out of his lawyer's office and over to his truck. As he walked, I saw that there was no longer a balance to his step. The joy had gone out of him. Joe wasn't the first guy I ruined, and he won't be the last, but he is the only one whose final ruin I witnessed from on high from my office, and it was one of the most powerful experiences of my life, watching a man walk to his truck, knowing that I had stripped him of everything else he had and that he owed his possession of his last asset, his truck, to my mercy. Joe drove away, his big, ancient truck spilling clouds of smoke from the exhaust. I was pretty sure I'd never hear from him again, and I never did. Story 3. I got revenge from my class teacher because he spread rumors about me. I was 16 at the time. My class teacher is 28M. I had three boys in my friend group. I am the only girl, so I had all the information about what they were going to do, what they would do in the future, and what they were currently doing. I was the first one our teacher asked after any bratty thing they did, so my friends confronted him and told him not to question me every time after they'd done anything, because I don't know anything about what they do. I was always standing alone with all the boys and our male class teacher when something happened, and my friends told him that it's not okay for a girl to stand alone with a bunch of boys in the classroom. It was awkward, because there were like 15 males and I am the only female there. Our class teacher hated me, but he couldn't do anything because I had the best marks in our class. I will always be the first, even though I did some crazy things. So he thought it would be a good idea to spread a rumor about me he wrongly accused me for having a relationship with one of my friends. 
Remember, relationships are not allowed in schools in my country. That boy had a little keychain that I gifted him on his birthday. He told the principal about that as his proof. And I also told him that I always hang out with him. We both were summoned to the office. My friend told the principal that he doesn't even see me as a girl. Same for me. I don't even see him as a man. And also, I told the principal that he is not the only one who has that keychain. My other two friends have the same keychain in different colors too. I also had three gifts from each one of them. He decided to summon the other two friends to the office too. It was so freaking embarrassing. Some even assumed that I was in a relationship with all of them. We told our class teacher to stop doing that. We thought it was over, but he decided to inform us at our house. Jokes on him, my dad is friends with my friend's dad. I told him everything. The way he questions me every time the boys do something and the way he complains to the principal. Everything. This was not his first time doing something like that. Well, my dad didn't take it in good faith. He was furious. He was complaining to the school about this. After some time, our class teacher had to change schools. He made sure that our teacher would transfer somewhere else. I didn't even tell him to stop. He was kind enough not to ruin his job. Many students were glad about that. I am not the only victim. He even accused some friends of having homosexual relationships too. Even though they were not, he never saw any friendship as normal. I am still friends with those three boys. Two of them are married now. One is in a serious relationship.